talking about fascial fitness and wall jumping. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative, innovative, and fun Pilates tips and techniques that help to deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're talking about your inner ninja, your connective tissue skeleton. Today we're talking about the ninja principle. Now this is the second fascial training principle of five that the brilliant Robert Schlelp and Devo Mueller have laid down for the principles of training our connective tissue skeleton. In an earlier post, we went over the first one, which is preparatory counter movement. Today, it's the ninja principle. This is a fun one. So the ninja warriors were famous for being very quiet and seamless, getting in and out. Um, because they couldn't be heard, right? And so that's what the kind of quality that we want to inject into our work when we are training our fascial system. So the exercise that Robert and Devo like to use for this training principle is the elastic wall bounces. Um, now this is really fun and you can get your clients into it right away, but what you're gonna find out from most of the clients that walk through the door and you start them on their elastic wall bounces is that they look more like Viking warriors than ninja warriors. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of explore some tips and techniques that you can help to bring your clients up to speed on someday doing these elastic wall bounces with a little bit more grace and finesse. So in the Pilates studio, here we go, we're gonna build some skills. And the first place that I wanna to go to is really creating awareness and strength and balance through the hand, wrist, forearm, um, arm bone, and shoulder girdle. So you'll get your clients up against the wall You'll have a little bend in the elbow and really have them explore grounding into the wall. So you want them to feel the knuckles of their um, metacarpals into the wall. You want them to spread the hands as much as possible. And then the, the placement of the forearm and arm bone is really important here. I wanna see that their extensor crease is straight and that their elbow point is dripping down towards the floor, and that they're imagining that the back of their armpit is shining forward, or the back of their armpit is coming forward. So that opens the collarbone as much as possible, but also keeps the space and room between their shoulder blades and the back. So keeping all of that beautiful length and width, they'll step back just a little bit, right, so that they feel most of their weight in the balls of their feet and then just a bit of weight into the center of their heel. Now, first we're gonna start with the um, balls of the hand tap and the finger pad tap. So the only thing that should be moving here is from the wrist and hand. The forearm, arm bone position stays the same. And I want them to really pay attention to having the same timing with the fingers and the hands. Now to detail this even more, you're gonna really make them aware of how they're standing on their feet, right? The alignment and the feel and the buoyancy of their knees and their hips, and also paying attention to filling up the back of their body. Right, to having really elongated curves and a full back body. Because this is what people are gonna tend to do. They're gonna tend to just sit into their shoulder girdle and into their ribs and forget about the back of their body as they go through this choreography with their hands, right? So that's very important. And what I'm feeling, whoo, in a really nice way, is this work through this whole extensor line of my hand, wrist, and forearm. So I'm starting to build a lot of awareness through this line. 
From here, we can also go into our hand waves, which is going to start to um, speak to those little pebble-sized bones of our wrist. So I want that same organization from the feet through the torso head and the arm bones. Um, so from here, extensor crease is nice and straight, and they'll pick up their hands. And I want them to rotate the palms and fingers only to that point where they're not losing the alignment of the forearm and arm bone. And then they'll place the hands onto the wall and then brush the wall, and this is really hard, brush the wall, wall coming back into their beginning position. And it's very, very small. So they'll lift, pivot on the balls of their hands, back down, and then brush. And especially during the brushing, I feel the most brilliant sensation at my lower wing area and underneath my shoulder blade. So you're really creating some very nice awareness and integrity in that whole serratus anterior um, external oblique line without you know, falling forward without collapsing. And that's going to be really important for their elastic wall bounces when they get there so that they're not just collapsing and falling into the wall during that. Now, you can also reverse this. So, well, not exactly reverse it, but the, the palms, fingers stay on. They pivot, right? So I haven't picked up anything yet, but lower, upper arm bones stay the same. I lift. And then I rotate and put the hands back down. All right, so the third one here is going to be to start to work the flexor system of my wrist, forearms, and hands. Right. So again, I want to make sure that my feet and legs are positioned right. So most of my weight in the balls of the feet and a little bit in the center of my heel. And so from here, the first place I'm going to go with this is I want all my finger pads thumbs to stay into the wall. So I'm going to come off with the heel of my hand, right? And just a little bounce. So I'm picking up, right, that little bit of suction cup and really making a nice tap with the heel of my hand. Now you can see that we don't have a great wall here, but um, at home or in the studio, you're gonna have a solid wall. And then from here, I can start to lose all of my finger pads except my middle finger, right? And then from here, I go into my slow motion jumps. Right? So I'm really paying attention that I come off the wall, I'm anchored onto all four corners of my feet, and I have a full back body. And I'm thinking about my hands as like stickers that I can peel off the wall and bring back onto the wall. Now look here also, I want to bring the awareness to my client. As they come in, the tendency is just going to be to sit into my ribs, my shoulder girdle, my spine. But through the finger pads and heels of the hand, I really want them, just like we do with the reformer springs, that when they reach into the wall, the wall reaches back into them. So they're communicating as they come in. So there, there is a finesse in the work. They're not just letting go as they come towards the wall. So with these skills built, you can also start to bring them into very, very many small push-ups, right? Not the jumps, but really many small push-ups. So as they bend, ultra, ultra small, and can they keep the space between their shoulder blades away from the spine as they come in, just with their push-ups? And guess what? That's what you want them to do when they're in their traditional push-ups, too. And this is going to help to prepare them for that along with helping them prepare for our second um, fascial training principle, the premier exercise, right, of our elastic wall bounces. And here, you know, if I had a more stable wall, I could go a little bit faster. So if they're able to keep all of that integrity, they can start to really move at a rhythmical pace. And that's what we want to see. We want to see movement that looks really effortless, seamless. It's as if there's no muscular activity going on. It's just going on through that yo-yo system of our connective tissue fascial bodysuit.
lady asked on the forum, when you say pretense, does that mean the stretch before you engage tense the fascia, or does it mean an engagement in the extended position to support the execution? This is a great question, Katie, thank you. So what, first of all, what I'm talking about is the bow and arrow principle. Right, so before we can let the arrow fly, we need to, to build up um, that elastic recoil. We need to pretense the tissue or pretense the bow so we can allow the movement to happen. And there's never, in, in this type of work, there's never a passive moment. So, the word stretch sometimes tends to mean some passivity, and here there's no passive moment. So you're really building energy on that preparatory counter movement so that you can create a nice springy fluid movement. And I also wanted to connect this to our second uh, fascial principle, which is the ninja principle, because all of these five fascial training principles layer one on top of the other. So we want to think about the preparatory counter movement when we're doing our elastic wall bounces. And we can also kind of link this to, to the image of um, when you see like a cat preparing to jump. So why a cat or a kangaroo can jump so high and so fluidly is because first they send their impulse down into the floor. That is their preparatory counter movement so that they can spring off. And you really want to think about that in exercises like the elastic wall bounce. That's it for today. If you have any questions that you want to see answered on upcoming episodes, comment below or on Facebook or Twitter or on our forum on the site. See you later and never stop learning. Today we're talking about your inner ninja, your connective tissue skeleton. Okay, go ahead. Again? Maybe a little less sexy nurse. <laughs> <laughs>